Thank you, dear friends. I'm really happy to meet you here in the Summer Theater. Thank you very much for coming. First of all, I would like to tell that audiovisual translator, I'm a very young audiovisual translator. I started my work not so far ago in 2014. In 2016, I was at the first audiovisual conference in Russia. It was also international, organized by the School of Audiovisual Translation, Russian school. At this very moment, I realized I had been doing something totally wrong. And after that, I had the courses of her films. I started to do the job. I took different projects which were offered to me in a row in a really big chain of German projects which can be seen on official sites. Talking about audiovisual era, we take into account 120 years because the official birth of, cin of cinematography and I mean the commercial cinematography. That's the ma that's the time when the Lum Lumia brothers introduced the commercial film. Let's talk first of all about the cinematography, what everything started with, and considering the name of presentation, you see subtitling, dubbing, and voiceover. So, want to mention that the interpreter doesn't do the voiceover. That is probably the translator, the interpreter, who has been through the courses of voiceover of sounding. So today we are going to talk about lip sync, dubbing and voiceover. I would like to introduce my colleagues. These are the family of Katerina Anatolia. They are specialists in fiction novels. I'm very happy to see them here. Robert McKee is known to all as the tutor, as the teacher, teacher of storytelling, stage art. He told the spectators go to movie to satisfy their needs of deep emotional experience. That is quite logic. We still continue doing this. If you want to rest, to retreat from boring and sometimes very dull life, if you want to change, to switch something, we go to movies. Most likely we like the movies which have some conflict. If the conflict has been broadcasted the right way. Talking about audiovisual interpretation, that is always a harmony, the harmony of the sound, of the visual side and effects. The task of audiovisual interpreters is to preserve all these components. We know that the minimum is the stage which presupposes the success. How did it start? The 15th century, somebody may say that it all started in Arabic countries before the 15th century. Remembering that, we can talk about camera obscura, which is invented in order to increase the photographs size. Talking about the history of, cin of cinematography, we can talk about the option of magic lantern. Dutch physicist, physicist Christian Huygens was the inventor. The inventions started to develop in 1650. Joseph Boxbill staged a huge performance named Philadelphia Christmas. You can find a lot of photographs in the internet at this very moment when the magic lantern was improved. The stereo optical notion came to the fore. The cameras were developing, developing. And finally, we have reached the stage of phenakistoscope. It means beautiful mo moving motion pictures or as it was previously named, phantasmoscope. What, what is the principle of its work? We see the moving pictures. The next stage, these are the four founding fathers of, cinema, of cinematography. These are Thomas Edison, who was helped greatly by William Dixon in this respect, and also a French inventor. 
After this, we have the projector and Thomas Edison's camera, so you can see on the screen. It was quite possible to take a look and see the unbreaking chain of motion pictures, and as I'm not mistaken, under the invention of Max Verde and Robert Roger, camera and short dimension movies appear. Important to mention is while introducing this technology, French have developed the opportunity to make the stage films. Talking about the Lumiere brothers in 19, 19th century, when the big train was arriving at the platform, people were running away. The film is known to have been shot in 1888. This is the stage in the garden, round hay garden scene, when Thomas Edison introduced and patented his invention. The cinematography was interesting for many people, precisely in the Russian Empire. A wonderful inventor, Joseph Timchenko, decided that it was an interesting topic for him. For him. He realized that Kinetoscope was interesting for him, and in 1893 he introduced it in the Russian Academy of Art, but unfortunately he was rejected, told no money. Then he goes to tradesmen, he was asking for money, for funding, but still they said they didn't have it. Even after that he went to Sava Mamontov, who founded the Tretyakov Gallery. And he said, yes, indeed, it has a great future, but unfortunately, I haven't got any money. And this is the way we are referring to other invention, another invention of the Lumiere brothers, when they understood that cinema has its future. Having redeveloped their camera, they have arranged a first cinema show in 1895. As you understand, it was just a dream to think about the sound film. The films were silent, they were very short, 50 seconds was quite a huge dimension at that moment. It was a great job, among others. There were such movies as The Breakfast of the Newly Born Child, Child or The Factory Workers Leaving Their Working Place. And I would also like to demonstrate the first short dimension comedy named Watered Watering Agent. I hope you, I hope you all remember it. So, I want to mention that the famous arrival of the train to the train station was demonstrated a year later in 1896. We might have thought that we have a film character only 45 seconds, but we have a conflict, a situation. We have a character, a little boy, watering man. We should identify who is the main character. Anyway, it's interesting to watch because something is happening there. Talking about the way the films are shot, what we should keep in our mind is that any film character is the expression of the urgent issues of their time, the problems of their time. Mentioned by Tatiana Salahivel Tile, who wrote a film about the psychology of movies. I can demonstrate it to you, I have it with me, so I'm, I'm sorry for the commercial. I will have a lot of uh, na mentionings of famous people and books, what you can watch and read. Our main task seems to be to choose the appropriate words to render the idea of the author. 
but also to introduce the conflict between the people, people and the environment, the inner conflict with the right emotions, with the right expressions. If it is a child, that should be one choice of lexical material. If that's the adult, that's another. If we are talking about engineer or other professions, if you keep in mind the Big Bang Theory, we have another lexical units there. If we are talking about the audiovisual works, what exactly we are translating, interpreting, that is the series of interconnected images. I want to scroll all the law. The most important here is to note who is the author. The important is the script writer. Usually you watch it as an audiovisual interpreter, so like you will be lucky to watch the script, to take a look at the script. Anyway, you will be happy to take a look at the idea of the author. Also, the sound editor is important. The same definition as in the Russian Federation, the USA definition is I have no doubt that there will be the same or similar definition in other leg legislations. While beginning to watch the film, I try to understand what is the inner conflict that a definite character has, whether there is, whether we should distinguish between them. If the rules, if there are rules between the script writers or where to find them, we could find it in Tatiana Salakhina's book. A couple of years there was a book published for the script writers. I could introduce the list of literature which I have used and recommendations of my colleagues, my teachers. So they will be attached in the file. I hope the organizers of the conference will help you, will provide it to you. Who are those wonderful people, script writers? How do you think? The first books, some books about them are Ask the Cat by Snyder, the second one, the second one, Umita. If we are talking about Russian Federation, there is the Russian Cinema School, there is the new Cinema School. I want to mention many online seminars and advise you to watch what they are doing there. Because when you go to the seminar of script writers you, or cameraman, you will know exactly why there is this kind of bread on the table and not that kind of the table, not that kind of bread. It seems to have no difference, but still there is great difference. Having read a couple of similar books, you will find a lot of movies, a lot of films which are related to the mass cinematography. Depending on our tastes, Having read a couple of books from the script writers, you realize that soon there will be the culprit, there will be the climax. A lot of interpreters watch it in order to realize the rules of interpretation. If that is lip sync, they want to know whether it coincides with the visual scene. But some people complain it's hardly possible to watch such movies. Going further, this is a wonderful teacher, instructor, Robert McKay, who wrote a story for Milan. This is also the story, and he is a real master of, he is a real master, he still conducts seminars. I would like also to mention my teacher, Alexey Kozuliaev, who has recently defended his PhD thesis dedicated to teaching audiovisual translation based on English. Where else can we read the news? If we are talking about Russian, that is through films, several magazines, they will be also introduced to you in the list. And also Journal of Audiovisual Translation. And now let's refer to the most essential. 
if you want to interpret the audiovisual piece, you need to watch it several times from the beginning to the end. Why is it so important? Because you will you will avoid mistakes and drawbacks. Please try to watch the whole movie. Watch it. Definitely you should do it. I would like to demonstrate several kinds, several types of interpretation. The first one is the old one. I think this was done without thinking about the story, without the visual effect, taking into account the family man by Nic the family man Nicholas Cage. I have lots of examples with him. A rich businessman in his youth, leaving the girlfriend, comes back to La from London, comes back to New York. He doesn't remember her. He is a businessman involved in his commercial activities. But magically, he, turn, he comes back several years ago, and it turns out to be that he is in the family, which he might have created with the family that, be, that is at the Christmas time. He is with her. They are with family. And the final scene, after his inner conflict, after he wants this woman again, he wants to be with her, he runs to the airport. I want to add one detail. She moves to Paris. Now I want to skip, and then we'll demonstrate. She moves to Paris, and of course there is the word move on in the conversation. Okay, I will have to repeat after him. So he is there, he is going to see her at the very moment he has realized everything. <laughs> Katie, you cannot take off, please. You cannot t board this plane, please don't board it. That's all, what, that's, what I, that's all what I'm asking, please listen to me. And now she's telling Jack, what are you doing here? Do you need to talk? Everything you wanted, you have it. I'm fine. At first I worried greatly. I was worried much about the situation. And now I'm moving into another place. Maybe you should do the same. And now the question, now I'm moving into another place. Maybe you should do this. The situation, man, woman, airport, the scene of, reuni of reunion. Doesn't matter, she's moving to Paris. The result, she's moving to Paris, and the reply is maybe you should do this. A tremendous phrase. The person watching the film, watching the text, realizes that probably she asks him to move to another town in order to get over the situation. Kate, don't fly away. Forget about the plane. Let's go to drink some coffee. That's what I'm asking. We have many flights to Paris today. Jack, what are you doing here? Did you come to apologize if that has been worrying you for so many years? I have come over that. It was very painful, but I'm over. I'm quite a different person now. And you're a different man. So here we have the situation, airport situation. We didn't notice that was the interpretation translation because that's the conflict. So there are two types of translation, but there is a mistake in the sense. No matter whether it's dubbing or voice over. Another example. I like the game for a cry. Playing the fourth part, I like it. It was localized. I love it greatly. The main character is very beautiful, handsome. He is going to a definite place in order to 
bring the ashes of his mother to eat. At the very beginning of the game, we know that in order to follow the tradition, the ceremony, he has to deliver her ashes there. And here the main evil man is demonstrated. Sometimes he is calling him, he directs him where he thinks he should. And he tells, you know, I was in the USA at your mother's funerals, and then I realized that probably you didn't treat everything properly. And another example, people watching it, some rivalries, rivalries watch it, and he is telling them that you are wrong, you are wrongdoers, I will conquer you. And he tells you have to conquer my counterpart Yuma. And then they turn to me telling go to miners. I have no idea what it is about. And then I hear the English text and actually he's telling about the miners where to find them. In the original version there was nothing about mother's funerals, there was mentioned about his visit to it and they just decided to drop over the mining because so the mission was omitted, the mining was omitted and it was it's really important for the interpreters. No matter where you begin, where you start, if you are working in the, ter in the team, you have to learn per perfectly well everything from the beginning to the end. If we are talking about the types of subtitles, we should refer back to the history of cinematography. That Actually, we hit the high spots here, but we should probably understand why exactly this type of subtitles have emerged and why. And why. The first stage is the intertitles. You remember silent movies, silent films in the cinema? Somebody is doing something on the screen. Somebody is coming inside the room, probably. People used to write something on the paper and installed it in the fr in the close up. The first titled the first subtitled movie named Uncle Tom's film was produced. Later a new term emerged which we know now that is subtitles. And actually we have to give equivalent of translation that into Russian. How was it done? So the papers with, subtit with the titles were substituted or there was a simultaneous translation, simultaneous interpretation. Why we have a miss? Why the, about simultaneous interpreters doing audiovisual translation? Because indeed, during the show, during demonstrating the film, there was a person sitting in the room who was interpreting simultaneously the intertitles and the subtitles. In 1890, a device was introduced which helped to scroll the subtitles and intertitles manually. It was not very convenient actually. And a magic lantern was used in another way. Under the entitled subtitles, under the hard sub under the hard subs there was a translation subtitles. Some people want to comment if it exists at the festivals. They want to say that probably that was in other centuries and still th they probably want to mention that these technologies remain the same. Another stage, 1927, the beginning of the voiced films. The first movie was We Are From The Jazz. That was another movie, Singing in the Rain, produced in 1950. Here we have a new problem here. Previously we had the subtitles. 
which were limited with the time, with the number of signs, number of words. We couldn't interpret every emotion, sneezing, repetitions. We couldn't describe perfectly well what was happening. And this is one more reason why people complain. Why are we watching film with subtitles? They told so many and so little has been written. So which way can we study the language this way? It is just an analogy. It is the possibility to tell the same thing with other words, but briefly. We have an interpretation of dialects, translation of dialects, and a part of that, of that we translate songs, verses, dialects. Those dialects, unfortunately, to my nightmare while I was reading that, I was petrified. Those dialects were while making those dialects, uh, the same actors were used even though different languages. Those actors could use different languages in, diff in the same scene with the same dialogue. And sometimes the actors didn't know, didn't know the language. I think you understand what exactly happened and what success the film had. Why was why was the voice over there? It's another way when actors were filming it for a long time. It was expensive, but there were only four languages. And what about other languages? What to do with these languages if I want the film to be taken to Denmark? And here we have the su hard subs epoch. They were used for real languages. Sometimes they were produced chemically, optically, with the use of laser. It was important for those smaller, bigger regions, locations. Most likely it was for those languages when this or that company didn't find it commercially appropriate to use another actor. While opening the map of the countries, you can see where people watch films, dub, dubbed films, and in which countries there are subtitles used. So you can see that Scandinavian countries like subtitling, Probably it's not because they refuse from dubbing, it's just their tradition. I have also noticed in a couple of works that Russia is a dubbing country. Still, some people like to watch films with the subtitles. To watch an original film with subtitles is very interesting and it becomes more and more popular. So maybe there will be different map about dubbing and subtitle. Germany is a dubbing country. It was very commercially efficient to produce it there. When you go to Weiberlin, you should go also to Potsdam, to Babelsberg, to the local archive. It's gorgeous. They have even reproduced the version of the Soviet film, Potemkin, which was pre-censored. For us, it is important to have the translation. And the subtitles were demonstrated two years later. It was a jazz singer and later the singing fool. It turned out to be like this. A comedy. Comedies have success. The chemical way of subtitling was invented in Hungary and Sweden, who prefer subtitling. In, 1930, in 1933, once I was introduced to my colleague who came from Serbia, and she complained to me, telling, you know, I was watching your TV. How can you watch it? I was wondering what exactly she didn't like. Probably she didn't like Russian films, Russian cinematography. Maybe there are some complaints about it. But the problem was the voiceover and dubbing. 
We watch Brad Pitt in the subtitles and he's talking all the way Brad Pitt normally talks. So I want just to notice that it's a tradition of subtitling dubbing. Another stage, 1938. So before that, interpreters used for the cinemas. It was logical. Cinema was the, uh, war, the employer. Television emerges. And the necessity for subtitling for television sets the new goals. Colors, different colors, different size of the screen, different number of symbols. Different subtitles which were used for the cinema had to be changed. Another portion of work. The film movie which was demonstrated in TV, it was the film The, pra the Student from Prague, Prague Student. The most important was the size of line. Great problem which is uh, which we face with uh, subtitles. That is the speed of reading subtitles because sometimes children watch it, school chi school children watch it, adults do it. Some people wa read it slowly, some people read it quickly. We should dwell on the speed. There is a number of programs on the sheet in list on the sheet i will demonstrate it to you which demonst which indicate which indicate the number of words you should place in one line for it to be visibly perfect if you have a film without time code sometimes it happens actually what is a time code time code is a unit of time it can be an hour, a minute, even a second. When, when the sound, when the sounding artist does the sounding, does the, does the voicing, he should calculate it himself. But now we have computer programs which can make this all much easier. I fancy how people could do it before computer programs emerged. The second point, even now, when there are subtitles at the film festivals, you have to scroll the subtitles. You have to set them at the very right moment. Now at different events, festivals, it's difficult to work Inter for interpreters to work there. So technicians work, sometimes te technicians do not know the language and sometimes they press the buttons not the very right moment. Everything has become automated nowadays, lucky we are. Since 1980s we can tell that the most desired air era of audiovisual translation has come to the fore when the translation of audiovisual films is a king. If we are talking about dubbing, dubbing in Europe should be mentioned since 1930s. To save the costs, expenses, sorry, sorry, just a second. It doesn't work. Anyway, it's fine. It works again. I've always been unlucky with the presentations. That's what I was just telling you. The interpreter and techniques, it's not the same. They are not friends. Thanks a lot. As to the subtitles and subtitling, the hard subs are the old subs. Pre-rendered subtitles are the transferring period and the soft subtitles are something you can plug in, you can install. What I want to mention is about the authorities. If now you're working directly with the cinemas, with Netflix, with Amazon Prime and other 
most likely when they start working with you they may test you telling i have such a length of the line you should put your dots you should open brackets close brackets or do different things of the kind in the subtitles the maximum number of lines that is two whenever you see this I want to say that I have found this picture, this image in the internet. I don't want anyone to recognize anybody, anybody's work here. So why I want to insist this? A person has written he is ready to do this work for this certain, for a certain sum of money, for a certain sum. So probably you should better send him to study two courses. If you like doing audiovisual translation, you should study. If we are talking about different kinds of audiovisual translation, we are talking about voiceover. This is the type of translation when one or several actors start the translation without following the speaker the most important is to begin with the character and to finish the sentence with the character i remember we have a problem because english and russian languages have different lengths of sentences different grammar different speed of speech sometimes i have to to sit and think how to organize the same dialogue there is also dubbing it's more expensive moreover if it is lip sync why lip sync synchronized not only the numbers of opening closing your mouth but also when you see vowels you cannot use consonants you should also think about it we're speaking is when you retell online the things which are happening, you respeak the online happening situation. If we are talking about dubbing, lipsing, and uh, voiceover, is to use transcreation, which we have much mentioned today, many times mentioned today, sometimes localization, when we know the registers of the language, we can render the speech, we can render the situation which is happening on the stage, preserving the beginning, the end, and the main idea. Another type of audio translation, that is audio description. Audio description, that is storytelling, retelling, describing of the things which are happening on the screen for people who have problems with their sight or hearing. You are describing what is happening, where, under what conditions. In Russia, we know the term Teflo commenting. You can read the definition in the internet. I hope there will be a voiceover to the next slide before demonstrating it irrespective whether it works or not if not then there will be the link to it important is to mention that sometimes you describe the events you describe the dances different cultural things cultural differences when there is the music which uh, this or that way influences the situation happening at this very moment you become silent and let the people enjoy the things happening on the scene sometimes if there is voice for example like our favorite parrot here scene we just want to know what is happening what's wrong with him to my point of view our description is a perfect example i hope it will be demonstrated.
Just a little pause. So what were you able to see? It was a logo tab description, the description of the landscape, description of the things done by the people. So why was Harry Potter named as Harry Potter, but not just the boy who survived or the boy with the scar? with the scar on the face. When the character appears for the first time, he is normally described. After the description was sounded, then you can name him. If um, on the screen you have Lin, then you name him as Lin, because everybody know him. I apologize for the example, it's just the first which came to my head. So where exactly can you learn audio description? That is my favorite school of audiovisual description which is known to be the leading localization company and the first school of, of audiovisual translation. Together with GOP, they have the new master's specialty. The first example, describe which, when, you want, when you can describe the shots, the close-ups, a wonderful project who cooperate with the educational establishments. It's a real small world where everybody know, knows everybody. This magic logo tab is a special view. A wonderful project that you can learn about as to audio description, commenting, not only in Ukraine, but also abroad. Apart from that, if you want to learn audio description, if you would like to familiarize with all the rules in detail, if you want to familiarize with the founding father of audio description, Joseph Snyder, you should link to American site audio description. I would also like to mention about the London Royal Association of Audio Description, so-called ADA. It doesn't really love me. Thanks a lot. I would also introduce to you a person who first who was the first to have told me about our description, Ivan Barshevsky. He you can follow him in the internet, find a lot of articles, guides. Before telling about, before, ta before taking the next step, I would also like to mention about the number of synonyms a person should know to the word hello. I would also mention about the contest. Unfortunately, I didn't take the gifts from Alona, but these are the translations notebooks with the utique logotype. The contest is together. If we are audiovisual translators, we are perfect translators. I would like to suggest you several words which are based on the play of words. You should try to translate them. Unfortunately, they're in Russian, but you can translate it into any of your, wor any of your working language. For example, the, for example, the word sort of to seen some words which are not translated actually here are demonstrated. The final slide is just as follows. Before I finish, I would like to tell once again that the beginning of the story which I started coming from dubbing to other stages, it seems to be so boring, but as, as soon as you open the project, you start the project under which you're going to work, you see all the conflicts, all the serials, you start your work, you understand, you realize, like, what am I supposed to write here? How am I to translate the word in this very moment, in this very place? What does the word thank you mean here? Or any other meaning? There may be a great number of variants depending on the, on the context. Each time, like a magician, you dive deep into the new environment, you deal with the new task. 
Sometimes in the literary translation, in simultaneous interpretation, you are in the new world and you create it together with the author. Sometimes when you have to translate the verse lines, you have to use the rhymes, but also you are limited with the size of the lines and the number of syllables in the words, in the lines. Sometimes when there are curse words, we should, cons we should take into account what the uh, curse words are based on, whether it is like in Germany or in Russia. Uh, the lecture by Kozolaev, who is telling about the obscene lexical material, he is telling about what it really means. He said that curse words are like a very rare ingredient. We shouldn't overboard in it. I will be happy to tell you about the dialect sheets, about what the other types of and all the programs according to which you can work, they can be either for free or you, you can download them under certain conditions. So they will be all introduced to you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Maria. I would like to start. So it's very often the situation happens that we have a very dynamic plot the chain of events and uh, some for example the uh, so, so different violent scenes etc etc how we can be beyond this so the answer is uh, there is a problem that you just uh, emerge into the role and you understand that uh, but uh, <coughs> For sometimes, if it was a horror movie, you analyze, you accept, you switch off. So you may change the project or you can just relax and change the environment and try to get a rest. Uh, my colleagues told me when they worked on the, uh, the project of the series, when they just uh, had violent scenes, and they told me that, okay, we take uh, such what numbers, uh, this number of series, and after that we will have the break. So it was my feelings that the third episode was the uh, extra one. Okay, you can share your experience of your expression. I would like to add to your uh, answer to your response about the what is horror. Horror means the visual effects. It's not really af what we should afraid, be afraid of, but real life is really can uh, be frightened. So you can analyze it. So I had about the ambulance, ambulance work, ambulance. Uh, Work and it was very heavy for me. And after that time, for three, uh, for three years, I have been eating chocolate. So thank you very much for presentation. I have a question and uh, I have a question and uh, comment. I'm a simultaneous interpreter, but I started doing the simultaneous interpreting before the localization in the 90s, and my child dream uh, came true, and I started translated the scripts for the voiceover studio and uh, uh, now I'm a simultaneous interpreter but for practice I I'm not just the interpreter of uh, the uh, literature I post in Facebook some micro sketches and just to be in a good shape as for the subtitles I suppose that uh, you can explain in more details what do you think about the uh, kind of subtitles subti sub subs and you have just the ready subs uh, now he explains the technical issues about the subtitles but uh, soft sub subtitles, this the text files formatted in a certain way, and where your players or player, your your 
It uh, reproduces on the screen. Of course, it's a very good school for any uh, for uh, translators and interpreters, for simultaneous interpreters. Uh, it's very good. I sent them script, for example, and they can chalk you for the length of the script and you uh, try to learn the compression and you understand what does the meaningful load means you start distribute the very big sentence into smaller ones so you understand what does the meaning load mean and uh, uh, when it is the uh, movie is dubbed you know uh, all the rest we can say that it was uh, it could be can be said in the following F following uh, screens and it was just a dream and my father when I was a child showed me so they're talking not in uh, talking not Russian and they talk in other options uh, other languages so subtitles are very useful and uh, why it is very important to uh, try to learn to so uh, when you can translate interpret the movie it's very important that my question you mentioned types of the translation uh, and in 2000 there was a moving as a funny translations interpretations and I made uh, several uh, interpretations under the nickname Dirge Morda Film and it was I was interested in how does obscene words can work if you have extra and after that uh, you can take a movie with obscene words and you can uh, and it was movie, the internal hunt, and uh, I came across the term of obscene uh, Lexus, and Mr. Goblin did it directly. He translated obscene words uh, from one language into the, uh, another language, and of course we know connotation, denotation, and expression, and the expression in different languages is different, so the German may call, uh, say, do idiot, and it uh, will be in Russian, uh, it means that you are uh, quite a queer person, a weird person, and, uh, well, that's why you should be aware of uh, emotional load of every word and word combination and the question how do you what's your attitude to the uh, funny humorous humorous translations I would like to give comment on the comment because about the connotations uh, I uh, thank you very much for your comment for these funny uh, interpretations I can my attitude is it's uh, on line with uh, in line with the uh, traditional work because you change all the meaning and you just shift the the notion and you get okay two cups from of goblin goblin translation i like mad dogs and and i understand that these uh, translations were not funny but they were correct but when they uh, will lost two towers of the lot of the rings I wasn't able to watch because I saw it in the original and I read it and I felt pain why funny interpreting was uh, very useful as an exercise when you try uh, translate humor for example i gave, was given the six episode of epi six series of cdf uh, uh, the wonderful is near a uh, program uh, like uh, our uh, russian uh, famous tv program and for example, a person comes that I work as a postman in the certain uh, province, and we have a word. For example, this called Zapichatka, and now they try to understand this word, and 
certain channel did some trial period and I understood that I need to uh, find out to just invent 80% of these jokes and these funny stories and of course uh, yes I agree with you the answer is that I agree with you but Goblin in the movie Towers the translation of the Lord of the Rings the second uh, well it's it couldn't be translated into English because it was very good tra transcreation and audiovisual interpreters uh, will uh, claim that it, it's not according to the rules. But if we are able to achieve the effect, the humorous effect, uh, so the audience should understand that this is funny interpretation. And they, I must say that uh, the translation was on shown on TV it wasn't really good uh, and it had very low ratings I would like to give more comments okay any other questions so you're welcome with them if you think about or I'm just in the condition I wear a hat and and this is American Translation Association head, and I can tell you, inform you that they have a division of uh, Department of Audiovisual Interpretation, but uh, it's quite uh, humble, but they have a special technical division for those who learn languages, and now they have a special uh, audiovisual translation. If you want, we can speak about transmedia. Media. No, but let us talk after the dinner. Wow, we are going to have round table. Okay, thank you very much, Maria. It was really very informative, this story.